what is up it's balloon welcome back to my channel hi how are you doing happy thursday yes this is me barefaced hair down freshly dyed pink hair down and we are going to get into some drama while i get ready to go to my retail gig later on today but i wanted to come on here and film this video first before i go today try and get this one up for you before i start work so let's get some hair out of the way before i start there we go just put that in there for now Ooh. there we go so this video right let's get into it this video is going to be about ethan klein and jordan peterson joe rogan as well ethan klein got into a bit of a spat on twitter with those two over like covid misinformation and stuff and then he called them out on his podcast he called them out on his other channel as well and got into a twitter spat with them jordan peterson clapped back at ethan klein because ethan klein decided to remove two podcasts where he'd had an interview with jordan peterson and jordan peterson really got offended by it the podcast I did with Joe Rogan, we did not discuss politics. It was a very amicable, interesting, kind of more about self-help and self-realization and stuff like that. The problem is, is that that's what makes him a gateway. I, I'll, I'll read the tweet I wrote. Years ago, I interviewed Jordan Peterson before I was very familiar with his politics. Uh, he was an interesting guest who I enjoyed sitting with, but especially now I can see he's a dangerous gateway to alt-right transphobia. COVID misinfo. So I removed both interviews today. Okay, so yeah, it was a very nice interview. But the problem is, is that if you watch that and you say, hey, this guy's smart and cool, let me look him up, you're going to find some weird, vile uh, rabbit holes, you know. So how did he become so well known? He first came to national prominence in Canada in 2016 in a debate about new laws on gender identity. Bill C-16 made it an offence to refuse to call someone by their chosen gender pronoun. Jordan Peterson argued that this would infringe free speech, while some supporters of the bill said he was advocating prejudice. From there, his YouTube star took off, and he has now over one million subscribers. And his videos, where he talks everything from identity politics, which we've touched on, to the Bible, to Disney movies, have been viewed over 150 million times. Gosh, that's about the same number of viewers we have on this programme. Huh. Last year, he supported ex-Google employee James Damore, who had been fired for suggesting men and women have different interests due to biological differences. Um, <laughs> do you think, though, because of the heat that has been generated, that your views have been misrepresented at times? Oh, definitely, but that's, you know, that's part and parcel of the process. I did take a very um, uh, forceful stance, let's say, against some of the excesses of the radical left-wingers, and it's in their best interest to paint me as uh, somehow a figure of the extreme right, because then I don't have to be contended with. But, I mean, it's easy for people's views to be oversimplified in a very large public debate. I mean, in terms of some of the issues, I mean, you say you've been uh, painted as, a, as a, an extreme right winger. No, or, some or, people have tried yeah. that. Not very successfully, but they've tried it. And you came to prominence um, in part over your opposition to this law that we just talked about yeah. in Canada, proposing the use of preferred pronouns for transgender people. Mm. Just for clarity. Mandating them. Yeah. Right. That Saying that you issue. should do it. No, but, that you had to do it. Uh, right, you had to do it by right. law. But just for clarity, do you think a trans woman is a real woman? <laughs> I don't really like the way those questions are formulated. You know, I don't know what that means. What do you mean a real woman? Well, she I'm asking you, in your mind, you know, it depends what you think a real woman is, but do you think a trans woman is a woman? No. Why not? Because I think that women are capable, generally speaking, of having babies and they have female genitalia and they have an XX chromosome and, and I think the biological markers are relevant doesn't necessarily mean that I don't think that people should be treated with respect and dignity if they happen not to fit easily into a gender category. That's a different issue. Right. But 
but it's a matter of definition. And, and I actually think it's a foolish argument in some sense, because what do you mean by real? Well, I mean, you've just clarified that, though. You, you, you don't think um, that a trans woman is a woman. And do you, do you think that that is what is behind or explains your opposition to this idea of a law mandating you to use a preferred no. pronoun is because you don't actually believe that that's the truth, that a trans woman is a woman and therefore you can't use that pronoun? No, that's not my argument at really? all. Really? Yeah, really. My yeah, argument uh, is that the no, government should compel is. voluntary speech. No, but I know what your argument is, and no, you've but made it very really clearly. It. No, but, but behind, that's exactly it. But the no motivation behind, behind, no motivation it, behind it. it. But you don't believe. I wouldn't the put everything on my li online in my life to take the stance I did unless I had thought that through very deeply, and I've thought it through very deeply. There aren't hidden motivations that have to do with some arbitrary prejudice against trans people. Okay. It's purely, pure and simply this. There's never been a time in English common law history where the government compelled speech and the Canadian government dared to do that. And that was unacceptable. And they masked it with this show of, of compassion for the oppressed. And I don't buy it. Right. But you would, as I think you said, at an individual level, mm. if somebody Wouldn't asked have. you, if, you know, somebody asked you to use a particular pronoun, you would do mm. so. Well, I have. You have. Yes. Right. Fine. OK, so Jordan Peterson is arguing that that law in Canada was an infringement on his freedom of speech. To be asked to call somebody by their preferred pronouns was infringing on his free speech. And it didn't seem to matter to Jordan Peterson that calling people by their preferred pronouns is a simple request. You know, and it's something that matters to people. It matters to trans people. It matters to non-binary people. But Jordan Peterson was just like, no, you know, it's an infringement on my free speech. Well, don't you think it's a bit of an infringement on trans people's rights and non-binary people's rights if you're not going to use their correct pronoun? I mean, yeah, in that little clip there that I showed you, from that kind of news interview, he did say that he would use correct pronouns for an individual if he was asked. But it's the fact that because he was asked by law, oh no, he didn't want to do it. You know, oh no, suddenly that was an infringement of his free speech. When really it's just about basic human decency, basic respect for another human being to use the correct pronouns for them. And of course, who else had to get involved in this argument that was going on between Jordan Peterson and Ethan Klein just because Ethan removed two podcasts that were interviews with Jordan Peterson. Oh, who pops up? Oh, Blair White, of course. The most pick-me trans person on the internet. Blair White shows up to give her opinion on all of this. Nobody asked for it, Blair. You know, nobody asked. But Blair White showed up to give her opinion because, of course, as a trans person, her opinion is the only opinion that matters, and that's that, according to Blair, you know. So here she is, Blair White, getting involved, and I'm just like, girl, you know, Blair, you should have sat this one out, sat the fuck down and ate your food and not said anything. Now, Blair, as a trans person, of course, has the right to speak her mind, but she's also conservative. So Blair's views also do align more with Jordan Peterson, Joe Rogan, you know, Blair White, I think, has even been on Joe Rogan's podcast. You know, so spreading COVID misinformation and stuff, you know, all of that stuff is stuff that Blair White kind of turns a blind eye to, you know. Blair White tends to go along with whatever conservatives who are relevant think, and she tends to sort of just lump herself in with them and act very pick-me towards conservative people, even if they treat her like shit. Um... If someone as frankly apolitical as Jordan Peterson, because if you watch his content, he is almost always apolitical. He speaks to people on the right wing. I know that's such a scary thing. He definitely like engages with them, but his actual content and his lectures are almost always, with some exceptions, apolitical. The majority of what Peterson talks about is self-help, self-improvement, getting your life together, philosophy, psychology. And he dips into politics sometimes, but to act as if that's the like whole sum of who and what he does, to say that it's radicalizing people or some sort of gateway, like we can just as easily say, Ethan, that you're a gateway towards what? Far leftism, communism, radicalism on the other side. Why is it only true ever of people right of center that they're too radical? And if Jordan Peterson is a gateway towards hate, what the fuck is this?
I love <laughs> saying fact. And I want to be very clear that this was obviously done in a comedic context. I'm not one of those people that thinks that context does not matter when it comes to slurs or curse words or whatever. Obviously, he's not calling someone that. It's done in a comedic context. I'm not personally mad. But going by your own standards here, if the benign apolitical self-help stuff Jordan Peterson does is a gateway to hate, then again, how can you claim that isn't? And perhaps Ethan's apologized for this, and if so, he definitely deserves to be forgiven. However, you just can't throw stones in a glass house. So Blair White claims that Jordan Peterson is apolitical. Now, I don't know, but if you ask me, I would say somebody opposing a law where they're asked to call people their preferred pronouns Somebody opposing that, to me that's not apolitical, that's very political, that is not apolitical, that is people, you know, seriously going up against transgender people's rights and, you know, being transphobic. In that interview that I showed you, that news interview with Jordan Peterson, where he says he doesn't think that trans women are real women because women to him can give birth, women... You know, all women are able to give birth and procreate and all of that. You know, I'm sorry, but that is a very outdated way of thinking now. You know, nobody is really sharing that way of thinking now, apart from far right wingers. You know, leftists and everybody else will call trans women women. You know, we're not stupid. We will call trans women women. And yes, science. Yes, biology. Yes reproductive organs but you know it doesn't matter at the end of the day a trans woman is a woman and if you're somebody who's not prepared to see that and not prepared to accept trans women as women then for me you can't say that you're apolitical because for me that's very political you can't say you're apolitical when you're directly you know opposing a law that is designed to be more accommodating to trans people. What? Jordan Peterson's views are that of a turf. Now, if you don't know what a turf is, I will pop a description up here for you somewhere. But Jordan Peterson's views are that of a turf. Somebody like JK Rowling. And if you're going to say that he's apolitical, no bitch, no he's not. He's really not. You know, he is somebody out here who is genuinely transphobic. It's not apolitical to be transphobic like Jordan Peterson is. You know, it really isn't. It's just something that I'm always going to talk about because I do always want to stand up for and stand with my transgender siblings. You know, I am non-binary myself. So for me, this is something that I'm like, mm, no, bitch, you know, no. We're not going to have people spouting, you know, misinformation, being transphobic and all of that jazz. You know, we just aren't. This is not the thing. And Blair White, there was no way that she had to get involved in this argument at all. Blair White has just got involved because Ethan Klein is kind of relevant at the moment, you know, with everything that he does with the H3 podcast. Ethan Klein is one of the biggest people, you know, on YouTube to have a podcast with a huge fan base. So Blair White has seen this as an opportunity to kind of make herself more relevant, insert herself, you know, and that's all there is to it. You know, I really don't have any kind of sympathy for Blair White in this situation yes of course Ethan has said some bad things in the past as well like the slurs that Blair White put in her video there you know and I am not sticking up for Ethan Klein using those slurs at all no mm -mm -mm, no ma'am you know I'm not sticking up for that at all not capping for Ethan Klein on that but you know I'm also not gonna stand up for someone who's being transphobic. For me, I find Blair White as a trans person to possibly be very kind of, I would say like almost like suffering from internalized transphobia. You know, Blair White always goes to the people on the right and sides with them. And it's very much like, it's very much like Blair is almost ashamed of being trans. At least that's how it looks to me, that Blair White is almost ashamed of being trans and doesn't, you know, doesn't want to ever agree with or side with any leftists or anybody else. 
because she'd rather act pick me for the people on the right. Dude, wh who said I'm trying to cancel you? I literally removed two old episodes from my freaking podcast. It's like conservatives are such triggered little snowflakes. They get the smallest amount of criticism, right? Or I make the decision that I don't want to put him on my freaking show. And it turns into, ah, he's canceling me. I didn't, I don't care what anyone else does with you, bro. I don't, I made the decision that I don't want to. I'm not canceling you. I don't care. I'm not writing anybody. I'm not doing emails. I'm not doing boycotts. Okay. So all of this was started just because Ethan Klein removed two podcasts on his channel with Jordan Peterson, a man that he no longer agrees with. He no longer agrees with Jordan Peterson's stance. So Ethan naturally took the podcast off and said, hey, you know, I don't agree with this guy anymore, so they're going to go. You know, that was pretty much the long and short of it. That was what Ethan pretty much came out and said on Twitter. I saw those posts. And honestly, you know, it's Ethan's podcast. He can do what he likes on his channel. You know, nobody can tell Ethan, you've got to keep this up, you know, Duh, you know, nobody can do that. But, of course, Blair White had to get involved, you know, just because she saw two people with larger audiences than her arguing about it, and she thought it was a good time to jump in. Oh, he's apolitical, though. Oh, Ethan Klein, you're such a hypocrite. You know, she thought it was a good time to do that, but really, she showed her ass. You know, she really did. I'm not the most political person in the world, of course, but one thing that I will always do is I will always stand up for the trans community. You know, being part of the LGBTQ+, myself, I'm always going to stand up for the trans community. You know, there's no ifs or buts about that. You know, I'm never going to side with Tories because I don't agree with their stance. You know, just like Ethan Klein didn't agree with Jordan Peterson's stance, so he removed those two podcasts. Oh, but that was a big issue for Blair. You know, it's like they call woke people and leftists snowflakes, okay? But who's the real snowflakes here? You know, if Blair White and Jordan Peterson can't take the fact that Ethan Klein removed two podcasts featuring Jordan Peterson just because he doesn't agree with their stance and their opinion, it's like... Blair White and Jordan Peterson, if you're going to cry about that, then I would argue that that makes you the snowflakes. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you on this one. I'm going to say take care, stay safe, stay well. I'll be seeing you on the next one. So love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know all your thoughts, comments and opinions down below. Love you guys. Bye.